Let us pray. Father, thank you for an, another amazing Sunday together in your holy presence. We give you praise. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Now, today my short sermon or message is entitled, it's about seed time and harvest again, but it is about evil seeds and evil harvests. And specifically, I'm going to share with you a little about the seeds of disloyalty in a general way, all right? So, now one of the things that we need in our lives is not only know how to achieve things, but also how to get out of problems when they come. And one of the things we need to also know how to do is not only to, let's say, produce things, but also how to prevent them from being lost. For instance, I don't know, but I suspect that a lot of water that is produced by the Ghana Water and Sewage Company is lost on the way. I don't know what percentage, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if more than half is lost. And so it's not only important, I don't know, please don't quote me on that. I don't know how much of the electricity we produce gets to where it's going, how much is dissipated, and how much, how many people come to church and then we lose some along the way and so on and so forth. So, in this season, it is important to also sometimes work on blocking holes, do you see, through which the good things God gives us are lost. All right? So this is a very short um, message. And like we said, our services are from one to four. This is the period that there will be church here. So everyone should adapt to that. Right. If we want to go beyond that, we will. But generally speaking, it's fixed between these times now. Now, evil seeds, let's look at Mark 4, 26. All right. Evil seeds, evil harvests. The seeds of disloyalty. He says, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. Amen. So the kingdom of God, keep the scripture on for a minute. The kingdom of God is as if. So, you know, Jesus was trying to show what is it like? What is it like to be a Christian? What is it like to operate in the kingdom of God? It is as if a man should sow a seed into the ground. That's what it's like. Okay? So, this is um, very important for you to realize that in the kingdom to which you have come, there is a major law here that is operating, is that things that are done are seeds. Seeds work. The kingdom of God. What, what shall I liken being a Christian? It's like. What can I liken it? Remember the Bible tells us in Colossians 1.13, that we are translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. So if you were living in Ghana and you moved to the UK, all right, it's a different world, with different rules, different laws. Okay? And you've got to learn the rules and the laws well. Otherwise, you get into trouble. I remember one time somebody went to Switzerland, somebody I know, and then he got on the bus. He was going somewhere, and when he got on the bus, he thought there was no conductor, and the driver did not also charge. So he said, well, this is wonderful. Free bus, free tram, and he was so happy. So every time he wanted transport, he would just get on the bus and there was never a conductor because there are no conductors and there was no, the driver doesn't ask you anything. Unlike England, 
when you are getting on the bus, the bus conductor, the driver of the bus now, they've combined it being a driver and being a conductor, you know, trying to save money. So they've combined the two, so the driver has to collect the money, give you the ticket and all that. So, um, so that's how it is in England. In Ghana, what happens? There's a mate. Yes. But it's not the driver, isn't it? There's a mate. And our mate is the conductor. All right? Anyway, I'm just explaining. Now, when you keep going, when you go from kingdom to kingdom, you have to know there's different rules. So anyway, one day, this brother was on a bus happily, and he said, what's the story? He, he was there when two gentlemen got on the bus in normal clothing. They were not wearing it like a uniform that they are soldiers or they are whatever, and then they came around asking everybody for their tickets. But he, when they got to him, he said, oh, that's, I don't have a ticket, there's no, I don't, it's free, I know that it is free. Oh, they said it's not free. So, uh, when they got to the next stop, he said, please, can you come out of the bus with us? Now, they took him to the police station, I mean, it was something else. I don't want to tell you the other part so that you'll be sad because it's Sunday. I don't want you to be sad on Sunday. All the things that happened to him, you know, because of that. And then the amount you pay is like buying bus tickets for two years. So in every new country, you have to know. In Belgium, it's, it's, uh, some time ago, it's not allowed to walk around without money. You have to have money to, to walk around. Yes, some time ago, but I don't know about now. <laughs> oh, yes, you must have some amount of money. But in Ghana, I don't know if that law applies. In, in Switzerland, you must carry your, you must, at least you must carry your passport when you're moving around. I've been stopped a number of times in the middle of the night, somewhere, anywhere, passport. They just ask you for a passport straight. Oh, yes. Do you carry your passport on? All right. Ghana card? So look at Colossians 1.13, please. It says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated or transferred us to a new kingdom. I think the American would, I don't know what does American one say. Domain. It's like kingdom. The king of the domain. Okay. So we are translated from one and transferred to another kingdom. So we are in a new country, in a new world, okay? So in the kingdom of heaven, we don't have Nigerians and Ghanaians and British and Americans. We have Christians, kingdom of darkness passport, and then kingdom of his son passports, okay? And here there are some rules. Now what does, is it like to be in this kingdom? Mark 4, 26. So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed. Everything is as though people are casting seeds. Everything around is like we are casting seeds. That, that's how it is to be in the kingdom of God. It's like we are casting seeds. Now, verse 27. And it says, and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring up and grow up. And he knoweth not how. He doesn't know how it came up, something. So that's why I'm saying that. Don't be looking at someone to say, no, how will I get what I've sown? How will I get this money? Because the scripture says, he knoweth not how. He doesn't know how. It comes back 
And there's no way to really know or understand how it will come back. Okay? Now, um, for the earth bringeth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and after that the full corn in the ear. Amen. Genesis 8 and verse 22. Genesis 8 and verse 22. It says, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Right now as I speak, New York is blanketed in snow, Europe, snow, everywhere is icy cold, it's winter. For us, it's also hamatan. <laughs> then it will change to rainy, a uh, hot season, rainy season, cold in August, and then it keeps changing. Four times we change. It's from the axis of the earth, tilted. That's what causes the four seasons. Well, the earth is not exactly straight facing the sun. It's tilted like this. So it turns in a way and makes the clouds and the cloud move in a particular way that causes the four seasons yeah to occur all right now everyone should be very careful of the seeds you sow knowing that this kingdom is such that what you sow is going to come back to you so Psalm 109 is where we want to go now. And basically we'll, we'll be in Psalm 109. It's, it's, a, it's a psalm that people don't really like to look at because it's quite a frightening psalm. It says, hold not thy peace, O God of my praise, for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. All right? For my love, they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer. They have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. All right? So, let's take the seven seeds that are mentioned in this scripture all right, there are seven seeds, and I want you to, you can take a note, take note of these seven seeds. Number seed number one, the seed of wicked speaking, the mouth of the wicked, speaking wickedly. When you speak wickedly about somebody, okay, in a way, can I, this man who is doing the script, Serena, come on stage. All right, let's look at the scripture. The seed of wicked speaking. When you speak about somebody wickedly, you know that this person cannot rise against this wicked thing you've said. Do you see? It's very harmful. Okay, number two, the seed of deceitful speaking. Deceptive, like what you say is not true. Now, deceptive is like it's not true, but it's not clear that it's not true. But then there's also pure lying. So look at the verse. It says, the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful. Okay, deceitful. Mouth. Everybody, are you seeing the word mouth? <laughs> mouth is talking about talking. Okay. The mouth of the deceitful are open against me. And they spoken against me with a lying tongue. So lying, telling lies, things that are not true. And you are saying them, okay? Then the next one in verse 3, Psalm 109, verse 3, I'm giving you the seven seeds that are there. 
verse 3, they compassed me about with words of hatred. So the third seed is hatred and words of hatred. You express the hatred by the words. Hatred, pure hatred. So don't sow a seed of hatred. Okay? Hatred. No one should have hate in his heart. Everybody you pray for, you must be able to pray for forgiveness for the person. Otherwise, hatred has built up in your heart. Okay? You should be able to pray for forgiveness for the person. Jesus prayed for forgiveness for the people that were crucifying him. Then, the seed of fighting against someone without a cause... They fought against me without a cause. Like, nothing bad has been done to you. What are you saying? What are you doing? Okay? You fight someone without a good reason. Okay? That is how many seeds? Four seeds. Seed number five. Seed number five. The first one is seed of wicked speaking. Seed of deceitful speaking, number two. Number three, seeds of words of hatred. Number four, seed of fighting against someone without a cause. Number five, the seed of enmity. For my love, they are my adversaries. Don't sow the seed of being an enemy. Huh? That's why they say you should pick your enemies well. A dog that decides to fight a lion is determined to die. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a dog that chooses to fight with a lion has determined to die. So you, you must be careful. And so it says, for my love, they are my adversaries. So he's pointing out that these people have become enemies. All right? Become enemies. So be careful. All right? Then number five, the seed of rewarding good for some evil for somebody who has been good to you. Okay? They've rewarded me with evil for good. If somebody is good to you, then you reward the person with evil for the person's good that is done to you. Okay? Then, the last seed is the seed of Returning a lover's love with hatred. Love with hatred. Like responding with, to love with hatred. So responding to a lover with hatred. You don't respond to somebody who loves you with hatred. And you don't respond. That, in this beautiful uh, little scripture, it shows two ways, strange ways, which people respond to love. For love, they become my adversary. So for being loved, you become an enemy. For my love, they are my adversaries. This is a strange response to love. But I tell you, love has many strange responses. That's why marriages have a lot of problems. Because for love... You would have thought you'd get love back. But there are two responses for love here. For my love, they became enemies. Then another one says, for my love, they gave me hatred. There are two different things. Do you see? So you must be careful, all right? Um, uh, when you, um, when you sow these seeds, because they are terrible seeds. 
So let's put these scriptures, uh, let's put the seeds that we have, if somebody typed it out, put them up on the screen so that we see these seven evil seeds. You must try not to sow these seeds, okay? All right, so number one is the seed of, um, the seed of what? Wicked speaking. Amen. Now, you see people harm people by their speech. They say things that are not true. And they can paint a picture. So some people don't get married because of someone said something wicked about the person. Are you with me? Yes. How many have heard something negative about a girl before and then you sort of cancel the girl out of your mind. Raise your hand. Yes. So people's lives are changed by wicked speaking. You know, there are people who don't go to church, who don't go to our church, because there are people that sow the seed of speaking wicked things that are so bad that it's so some way. Do you see? It's so some way to say certain things. All right? Then number two, the seed of deceitful speaking. Do you see? For my love, it says, they have opened their mouth, okay, against me. The mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful. Verse two. The mouth of the deceitful. Look at the scripture. The mouth of the wicked, that's the first seed. Then the second seed is the mouth of the deceitful. Do you see? Are opened wide against me. Okay? So, mouth of wicked. Like, you open your mouth, big talking. And then, mouth of deceitful. Okay? Are you watching the scripture? It's a very amazing scripture. The mouth is opened against me. Um, and you see, deceitful is like people create impressions by what they say and give a picture and they represent things. And then every story can be described in so many ways, you know, describe the person, this is person is that, person is that, and I've heard people describe me, I mean, so badly that, I mean, I could see how someone listening to what they are saying will really find me to be a very horrible person. And I can understand them if they think so. You see, I'm not saying that I'm a good person, but what they were saying, I said to myself, this is not an accurate presentation, but it's like that they are fulfilling scripture. How else would the scripture be fulfilled? The mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me and they have spoken against me with a lying tongue. You know it's not true. You know it's not true. Okay. Number three, the words of, verse three, the seed of the words of hatred. Okay. The seed of Words of hatred. Okay? All right? The seed of words. Of, now notice, they compass me, surround. Now, these things are done by people all the time. If you live long enough, you're going to be, find yourself surrounded by word, words of hatred. I mean, there was a time we were building in Mampong and we were surrounded. When I say they compassed me, we had one fellow who went around from person to person, community to community, trying to stir up the people in that area to hate us. We had it in Koligono as well. They tried to compass us around with words of hatred. Okay? So these are things, if you live long enough, you are going to see them. And then, so that's a bad seed. Hatred, be careful. Who you hate. Whom you hate. Yes. Be careful. You see, because it always brings a response. 
It's a seed you are sowing. So once you started to, it's better to have friends than enemies. Once you start to hate people and you are filling with so much words of hatred, you will get for yourself an enemy that you may not want to have. Okay? And then it says what? The next seed number five is they fought against me without a cause. Okay? That is the seed of fighting against someone without a cause. Okay? Fighting someone against someone without a cause. Okay? Now, that's why Jesus said they hated me. Jesus was saying that. Jesus said they hated me. He said, you, you fulfilled the scripture. They, they hated me without a cause. Like there was no real reason. Do you see? Look at it. In John 15, verse 25. This cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. All right? They hated me without a cause. Put the scripture on whatever we're showing on TV here. They so they hated me without a cause. So it's like, I mean, what has Jesus done? What has Jesus done? I mean, let's be very honest. Has he done anything that deserves what you are doing? Come on. I mean, does he deserve this trial? Does he deserve this hatred organizing the people against him? It's, it's without a cause. There is nothing that Jesus did that warranted anything near what they were doing. Never. And it, but it's a seed. I'm, I'm going to come to the harvest. The harvest is in the same psalm. It's just the, from the next verse. <laughs> I'm just talking about the seed and explaining what it is like. All right? I mean, what is, the, what is the reason? Like you ask yourself that, what, 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 what has been done to you? What has been done to you? Now, the next seed. The seed of love. No, it's not enmity. It's enmity for love as a response to love. As a response to love. It, notice what the scripture says. For my love. Like in response to my love, they are my adversaries. Like, after all the love that I have given to you, eh, you are repaying it or responding to it by becoming an enemy or joining yourself with enemies and becoming an enemy. So it's a response. And I pray that no one here ever will marry someone and become an enemy to the person you love or respond to the person's love by becoming the person's enemy, which happens also in marriages. So, love can be responded to by choosing the person to become an enemy. And you must be careful about making somebody an enemy whom you have no idea about wanting to make such a person your enemy. Is that not so? Beautiful. Because um, if you do that, you're going to have yourself a big problem. Amen. Then, the seed of Number five, the seed of rewarding evil for someone, for good, someone who's been good to you. Now, someone said, oh, but these things don't apply to me. Now, it applies to everybody here because your pastor has been good to you at least. Your father has been good to you. Your mother has been good to you. So these are warnings for those of us who struggle with parents. Your, everybody's mother has loved him or her before has held you with such tenderness and carried you with such care throughout your life. You may not know, but of course, when you grow up, you don't remember being carried. Huh? And fought over you, defended you, helped you, 
throughout the years of your life. So anybody watching me and listening could, by mistake, fulfill some of these scriptures. And you must be very careful. Because I'm here. I'm, I'm, on, I'm, I'm preaching to you. I'm preaching to you. I pray for you. I bless you. I'm doing good things. So I'm loving you. I mean, we, the full-time pastors, we are on leave. I'm here preaching to you. Yes. I'm doing something good, but maybe you don't know what, I'm, what we are doing. You get what I'm saying? You don't know, you don't know what we do. We don't know what we do privately and the issues that there are and so on. Nobody really knows. So you have to be careful with these people because rewarding someone who has been good to or you've lived with somebody before. Anybody who has ever lived with anybody, even if it's for a day eh? or, or, or a week, or if you lived in somebody's home before, the person has done good to you. You, you. you don't repay good by becoming an enemy. They rewarded me evil for good. And then an amazing one. I love you, I love you, I love you. Then the response, hatred. I mean, and you say, oh, but I don't hate anybody. But you see, there are certain things you say that show hatred. That it's like there must be some hatred, depth of hatred. All right? And then the last, yeah, that's the last seed. Seed number six. How many seeds are there? Seven. Yes. Seed number seven. All right? So, all these seeds, the seed of responding to love with hatred. Okay? So, everyone should be careful. Now, what is the harvest of these seeds? Psalm 109. Let's go to verse 5. It says, They rewarded me with evil for my good. Isn't it? And verse 2 says, The mouth of the wicked. Look at verse 2. The mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful. Like the things they were saying were wicked and also deceptive. Very deceptive. Okay? All right. Now, the harvest comes in verse 6. Set thou a wicked man over him. So, and let Satan stand at his right hand. <laughs> now, set thou a wicked man over him can be one day a person may be in authority over you and the person may be merciless. You know, there are some people, you work for them, and uh, maybe you're going to get married, and the person says, oh, don't bother, take a week off, or take two weeks off, because you are getting married, and, or even here is something for your marriage. And some people, no, 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 Monday, you don't come to work, you are off. We don't need you in this, in this workplace. We are working here, we are, not so doing, we, are, we are not running a charity, you know. So, a wicked person can be appointed over your life at work, in life. I mean, maybe you may be in prison. The prison officer will be very wicked. There are some prison officers who are kind. They bring food. They bring messages. They give you phones. They give you food, cigarettes. I don't know whatever they need. They, 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 they do things like that. One of the hateless top guys, he killed himself in prison because the guard, uh, the guard gave him medicine. They were going to execute him. So the guard gave him the medicine the night before. So he, he swallowed the cyanide and he died. So the night before his execution, you know, he took the tablet and uh, Herman Goering was a very fat man and in charge of the Air Force. Oh yes, he was the second in command to Hitler. Yeah, he gave him the guard to say, Charlie. So that, but he, he said, set a wicked man over him. Now, this is a, it's a wild harvest. Then let Satan stand at his right hand. This means that Satan is present. <laughs> it could also be in the form of a marriage. Because a marriage is one of the ways that a demon is present with you. So if a demon would harass you in your life, it could come in through 
a, an evil marriage where there's a certain kind of evil that is present and legally present and legally bound to you. So, oh yes, and it's legally present. So, no matter what, it is present with you. So, to dwell in the presence of Satan uh, and whatever that demon does, whatever is tormenting, pressure, uh, pain, difficulty, temptation, is always there. It's present, doggedly following you. The next one. Let, when he shall be judged, let him be condemned. You know, <laughs> and let his prayer be seen. This is the reward for this is the reward for what? For sowing the seed, evil seeds of compassing people around with wicked words, for rewarding evil with good, for rewarding love with hatred. It said, when he shall be judged. Because no one ever knows the time when you will stand before a judge or somebody determines or decides things about you. And it says, any time that comes up, do you see, it should, it should not work out well at all. It should be condemned. And then let his prayer become sin. His prayer is his pleadings. When he's pleading and he's begging and he's crying, let things get worse as he speaks. And so when you speak and you explain yourself or you try to pray or to speak about it or to plead, to beg or to work things out, it gets worse, not better. Then, verse 8, let his days be few. Now, this is, this is one of the specific prayers for short life or shortened life. Let his days be few. Yes, let his days be few. The, and let another take his office. These are two separate cases that are set in place. Hmm. Oh, yes. You see, many times pastors will be praying for people for healing. Lord, heal. Anointing. And that's why when Jesus in John chapter 5 went into the place and there was a lot of sick people, you know, he healed only one person. And when they asked him what he wanted, he was doing in John 5, 19, he said, may I only do what I see my father do. If my father work, can I work? He didn't see his father get involved with all the other people. And so he said, only one person. Well, why do you heal only one? You'll be surprised that let his days be few. It's applying to some people around there. Let another take his office. That means that whatever work he is doing, eh, let somebody comfortably fit into his place. Let another person comfortably fit in, slide into the person's place. If it is in a, in a marriage, like maybe you are a husband, let there, it means let there be another husband to comfortably take over. Or if it's a wife, let there be another woman to comfortably take your position as a wife. Or if you are a teacher in a school, let somebody take your place. You no more be a teacher there. Or any job you are doing, let somebody comfortably and miraculously and magically replace you and like it's a wonder that you are replaced. You know, I was watching a movie the other day, it was about an aeroplane that took off from, I think, Jamaica and landed, I think, in New York. But when it landed, it was five and a half years later. So it means it had been flying for five and a half years, it disappeared, and then landed five and a half years later. It's like the Malaysian plane that has disappeared. When it lands, we all, we all hear of it. Yes. So that movie, now all the people came. So they, 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 when they landed, they said, oh, we took off, it was one hour. It's just one hour's flight from Jamaica to New York, or not, maybe five hours, four hours, whatever. 
So they landed. So they, 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 they knew everything was normal. But everybody has gone on five years. And everybody thought they had died. So people came back to their homes. This one saw her best friend has married her husband. <laughs> her office, let another take thy office. Let another take his office. <laughs> the office has been taken. And all the people came five years because you are presumed dead. I think it takes seven years of disappearance for you to be presumed dead. But I don't know, five years there, everybody assumed that, they, I mean, five years, a plane cannot fly for five years. What a curse and what a judgment. And this is in relation to, look at, let's look at this. Let's look at Psalm 109, verse 102. Let's look at the verses. It says, the mouth of the wicked, the mouth of the deceitful. I mean, both two things. Both is not true and you are wicked. The things you are saying is very some way. Very. Everybody should watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Well, don't sow that seed to reap it. Don't sow a seed that you reap and you'll be wondering, my goodness. Then after that, you'll come and sow seed in church. I've sown my seed. But after you sow with your mouth wicked words and lying tongues. He said, they're spoken against me with a lying tongue. Verse 3. They compassed me, they surrounded me with words of faith and fought against me without the words. Like, oh, eventually, what is the issue? Oh, how? But what you are doing? How, what, what you are saying? How you are fighting? Mean, me? Is it me you are fighting against like this? Why? I don't understand. Jesus was wondering, what have I done? Have I robbed anybody? Harmed anybody? I've gone around I'm with my disciples preaching. I mean, how can you organize the whole world to come to kill me? Hey. The people said, let his blood be on our head. They were calling Psalm 109 to come. Let another take his office. Let their days be few. 70 years later. It's because of the prayer of Jesus that it, it waited for 70 years. He said, forgive them. They know not what they do. Forgive them. But 70 years later, the whole of Jerusalem was replaced. And it was only in 1947, 14th of May, 1947, that Israel became a nation. 2,000 years went by. They were replaced. Let another take that. Israel has been overrun by everybody. The last group, the last people that was there was the, the British Empire. <laughs> England included that place some years ago. Let his days be few. Let another take his office. Sometimes you see people in their very, when, when you meet them eh, and they are the ones, they have some small power. They don't know that there's a verse that says, let another take his office. As a beloved, somebody can take your office, that office of a beloved. Let another take her office or his office. <laughs> Tell every wife and every husband, another can take your office. Let, number nine, let his children be fatherless. <laughs> and his wife a widow. This is because of the, the speakings. You know, when you, when you know what has been done for you before, you've been appointed. Now, this is what he's saying. You've been blessed. Good has been done to you and for you. Let his children, verse 10, be continually vagabonds and beg. Let his children be continually vagabonds. So some people who are vagabonds, it's not that they want to be vagabonds. Not that they, they, they've chosen to be vagabonds. 
when, when you give birth, I give birth to a vagabond. And let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Verse 11. Let the extortioner catch all that he had. And let the strangers spoil his labor. It's like your work, your money is going. And we are talking about sowing seeds. So if you sow good seeds, sowing seeds in church, and you sow seeds of ungrateful wickedness, you should expect, you see, that's why it is not as simple as it looks. I mean, I've been giving tithes since uh, 1973 and this and that. Look at these ones too. And last time I gave, I gave 10,000 and I don't see anything. God hasn't done anything. He said, let the extortioner catch all that he had and let the stranger spoil his labor. Verse 12. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him. You see, one of the things we need in life is mercy. Somebody who will say you are forgiven. Neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. And nobody should be kind to his children. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him. Recently, I saw the Korean prime minister coming out of prison. She has been sentenced to 20 years or 21 years. And they granted her pardon. After one year or two years, I don't know how long. They granted a pardon. That's this verse. It says, let there be none to extend. But there was someone to extend mercy. To her and grant unto her presidential pardon for whatever it is she had done. So come out of jail free. And she, they took a picture of her as she was coming out of prison. It's not only about making it, but it's also how to come out. Let there be no, there will be no one to grant mercy or to think in that way. Huh? Verse 13. Let his posterity be cut off and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Turn with me to James chapter 3. Behold, verse 4, the ships, they are so great, they are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm. Even so, the tongue is a little member eh? and boasteth great things. Now, underline this part. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. How great a matter a little fire kindleth. Then the next verse says, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is a fire. The tongue is a fire. So your tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity. That means that it contains categories of evils. Deceptions, lying, treachery, wickedness, I mean, betrayal, many evils are, it's a world in the tongue. It's a world of iniquity. So is our tongue among our many members. That it defiles the whole body, it affects your whole life. And set it on fire, the course of nature. And it's set on fire of hell. In other words, a lot of demons in hell move the tongue and inspire the tongue to speak. The tongue is one of the strong spots that is attacked by, it's one of the targets of demons, your tongue. That's why the Holy Spirit, when he comes on, he targets your tongue first and you start to speak in tongues because the tongue is the world, the world of iniquity. It's the target of hell and it's also the target of heaven. And that's why when God is changing you, he changes even your speech. And the way you speak, your lies, you see that lying is something that will go out of you. Even what you call white lies, blue lies, all types of lies. 
False things, deceptions, misleading, leading people on, misleading people, deceiving, lying, fooling people, making fools of people. The curse on it is too big. Oh, yes. Yeah. It says, every kind of beast can be tamed, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil. Verse 9, therewith we bless God, even the Father, and there we curse men. So I'm just telling you, watch your, watch your mouth. Because your mouth gives the reward for the good that has been done to you. And when we teach about loyalty and faithfulness, we are teaching about the greatest character that Jesus Christ spoke of when we stand before him, well done, good and faithful. You are constant. Not one thing you say, one thing here, one thing behind your back. Behind anybody's back. You are one thing in real life and one thing in real life. Watch your mouth. And your mouth will only speak from your heart. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So it is what's in your heart that makes you talk. So everyone should be careful the seed that you sow in your life. Especially people that are protected by the word. There are some people that are protected by that, like parents, they are protected by the word. Foolish parents are even protected by the word. Bad parents are protected. Parents who don't pay fees are protected by the word. Parents who are bad are protected. Parents even who are in prison, they are protected by the word. The word of God says, honor your father and your mother. But this is the promise. This is the, the, the commandment with the promise. They are protected by the word. If you only say that, that it may be well with you and that you may live long, those two things are guarding parents. It guards, guards fathers. It guards mothers. It guards, even if your mother is whatever, it guards, it's guarding them. You have to watch yourself. Uh, when it comes to some people, anointed people are guarded. He said, touch not my anointed. They are, they are guarded heavily. You see, if your eyes are open, you see angels moving to strike people. Oh, yes. Angels move. They react. They respond. They don't touch this one. It's not everything you touch. It's not everything you touch. Every house is ready to be washed away by a flood, but the owner is always ready to prevent it. Yes. As for flood, is there coming to wash things away. But the owner, all oh, houses have been built for, to protect against a flood. You may come with your flood. But you'll be surprised. Yeah. God has heavy duty protection. When Jesus came, they did whatever they want to do to him. Sorted him, beat him. I mean, lashed him, lashing Jesus. Ah, I wonder where the guy who lashed I wonder where he is. <laughs> eh? A short life that you have to live. You are lashing the son of, that son of God has come, you are lashing him. Okay. Learn it. You see, this is the most beautiful and important thing that we learn in our church. Don't sow seeds of disloyalty. Don't sow evil seeds. Because when you are reaping, you can't. And you see, remember the scripture I started with, Mark 4.26. The, the kingdom of God is, is as if <laughs> a man will sow, a, a, throw a seed to the ground. That, that's how the kingdom is. It's as if a man should cast a seed. But you will not know how it will overwhelm you. Oh, yes. You will not know how it will overwhelm you. So, let us learn and be careful. In Numbers chapter 12, you see an evil seed where Miriam 
and her brother Moses. The Bible says that they speak against Moses because of whatever the issue was. The Ethiopian one, well, yes, he has married her. Uh-huh. For he had, it was true. And they said, has the Lord not even spoken against only Moses? Uh, only, only Moses? All right. Verse 2. And the Lord had it. The Lord did what? So when you compare someone with words of wickedness, you speak against whoever and whatever. The Lord hears it. The Lord hears it. The Lord hears it. And the Lord speak suddenly unto Moses. Are you there? And then we started to have a whole drama. In Numbers chapter 20, we see just eight chapters later. You know, they forgave her, Miriam and Aaron. In fact, they, and Miriam had leprosy. Aaron too didn't have leprosy. I don't know whether... Why they didn't get the leprosy, both of them. But in Numbers 20 and verse 1, eight chapters later, and the children of Israel came, the whole congregation, to the desert of Zin. And the people bore, abode in Kadesh. And Miriam died there and was buried there. The same chapter, Numbers chapter 20, verse 27. Moses did as the Lord commanded, went up into Mount Hall. But in verse 26, he says, strip Aaron of his garments and put them on Eliezer, his son. Let, let thy days be few and let another take thy office. Strip Aaron of his garments and put them on Eliezer his son. And Aaron shall be gathered unto his people and shall die there. I mean, he was actually commanded not to kill him, but to lead him to die. Which I have not yet seen before in practical life. Verse 27. And Moses did as the Lord commanded. And they went up into the mountain in the sight of the congregation. And Moses stripped Aaron of his garments. And put them upon Eliezer his son. And Aaron died there in the top of the mountain. And then Moses and Eliezer came down from the mountain. And when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, they mourned for Aaron 30 days. But they didn't mourn for Miriam. Miriam, be careful. And when you are speaking big words. Those of you who are friends with pastors and bishops. An anointed man of God. As they are sinning and you join them to sin sexually or physically or with your mouth. Be careful. Aaron, Miriam, both of them died in the same month. Aaron, they mourned for him for 30 days. Miriam, there was not. Just move on. Let's, let's carry on. And Aaron didn't get leprosy. Even when he made the calf, he didn't get sick from it. Why? Don't bother to ask me because I don't know. (laughs) I'm just saying that the things of God are a little mysterious. In fact, they are too mysterious to try to form conclusions. But you've got to be careful. Miriam speaking and Aaron speaking was not the same. No, 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 it's not the same. Because the response was different. Aaron was, Miriam was struck with leprosy. And, Mir, and God asked Moses that he should leave her outside the camp for seven days. And then go for her. Otherwise that would have been her end. Those of you who have friends as pastors. And think that talking to her. You see even if a pastor is talking rubbish. You have to be careful. You know one time one of my pastors was, was, was driving a man of God. And the man was saying so many negative things, not about me, but he was saying so many negative things about somebody. And unfortunately, pastors who talk a lot and speak negatively have friends who are not pastors. 
And it, it, is, it misleads the young ones to think that you can just talk about everything, about anything, about anybody. But you better watch for the future of Aaron and Miriam and watch for the scripture which says, let his days be few and let another take his office. Appoint a wicked man over him. When he's judged, let him be condemned. Let his prayer be seen. Let Satan stand by his right hand. Let his way be dark and slippery. Learn all your life. When Kenneth Hagin died, several pastors spoke at his funeral and they said, we never heard him talk about anybody. We never heard him talk about anybody. We never heard him say anything funny about anybody. Never. This was the main thread throughout the testimonies of the people. You never hear him talking about people, about pastors. He had one experience and that was it. One day, he came for a conference. And in the conference, after the conference, some people came to see him who were not there the day before. And they asked him, he said, we heard yesterday there was an announcement about a pastor who had fallen into sin. Were you there? And I hear he has been removed. I hear this and that and that. And he said, yes. And they asked, so what do you think about it? And he said, oh, yeah, I concur. The word he used was I concur. That's what that word I concur. I don't use it because he said, when he said I concur, that was it. He said that evening when he went home at midnight, he said midnight he was in his room. Now, this is a man of supernatural experiences. He was in his bedroom at midnight during the conference. When the light came on like daylight, he said it became day. And then he heard a voice. And the voice said, who art thou that judges another man's servant? He was alone in the room. And the, the sun had come out at midnight. Then a voice came the second time. Who art thou? That judges another man's servant. From that was I concur. And that's why that concur. I don't use that concur. <laughs> Who are thou that judges another man's servant? And the light went off. He says, since that day, he doesn't talk about anybody. You may have done this. Everything. I don't know. I don't care. He learned not to talk about people. Be careful of Psalm 109. Let's go back to Psalm 109 as we close. This is a good message for the new year. Yes. Romans 14 verse 4. Romans 14 verse 4. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Everybody falls or stands in front of his own master. The real fall is when you fall before your master. If you haven't fallen before your master, you have not down. Because it's your, your master who holds you up and says, no, it's my, it's, my, it's my man. To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holding up for God is able to make him stand. Amen and amen. God is able to make his servant stand. No matter what you say, you stand or fall if you stand or fall before your, your, your master. Anybody who works for me, it is if you fall before my eyes, that is when you, you fall in terms of the employment or in terms of the job you are doing with me. If you don't fall before me, it, it doesn't matter. No matter what somebody thinks about you. I have had people that work for me whom people don't like. And sometimes I laugh to my head when I hear something little. So this person is like this, this person is like this or whatever. It makes me happy because I realize that that is the character that is correcting that thing there. That's actually what makes me like the person. As you think it's a negative trait. Who are thou? Romans 14 verse 4. That judges another man's servant. To his own master he standeth or falleth. He will stand or fall before his own master. Yea, he shall be holding up. For God is able to make everybody stand. Wow. 
Anybody he wants to be standing, he can make the person stand up. It is in front of his master that it matters. Are you there? Psalm 109 as we close. So don't forget, eh? we've had a nice message today. Yeah, it's a very nice message. <laughs> Psalm 109. Sita, evil seeds and evil harvest. I've given you seven, seven uh, evil seeds. And I'm showing you the harvest. The harvest are their verses. So I'm sure you can take seven of the verses. Look at the evil seeds again. For the mouth of the wicked. No, no, no. The scripture. The mouth of the wicked and the deceitful are open against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. Never lie about anybody. Today is your last day. And never again, ever. Eh? Never. You know, one day someone invited me to preach somewhere at a big program. And I asked him, who are the other speakers? And he mentioned this one, this one, this one, this one. And I told him that, hey, this man is coming to preach. I said that when I come to preach after this man has preached, it will be as though I am speaking against all that he has preached and casting a slur on him and giving an impression. I said, no, I will not come. I declared, I said, I will not, I, I cannot, I will not be there. And this is the reason, not in Ghana, outside Ghana. I said, I can't come for that. And I knew how, how much he would even honor and bless me for coming to this because I know the person very well. I said, no, no, for that reason, I can't. Less it, it like I'm, I'm casting a, a negative feeling on, on someone. Now, verse three. For the mouth, they compassed me, they surrounded me with words of hatred. Be careful who you hate. Be careful who you hate. Be careful who you hate. And fought against me without a cause. Be careful, be careful what you fight. The dog that is determined to die is the one who goes to attack a lion. <laughs> Verse 4. <laughs> For my love. They are my adversary. Is that how you respond to love? And sometimes I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you in different ways over the years. Is it how you respond by becoming an enemy of the person? Hate, now in verse 5, they have rewarded me evil for good. Evil for good. And when you say, good, what good? I officiated your wedding. I prayed for you, eh? I preached to you. I preach, I'm doing you good now. I'm preaching to you. I prayed for you many times. I laid hands on you. I anointed you with oil. I helped you in many different ways. I formed a church which you were part of. I founded a church which you have. I appointed you, anointed you, consecrated you, ordained you, helped you, introduced you. They're all good things. They're all good things. I employed you. They are, they are all good things. They have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Wow. You don't hate your lover and you don't reward evil for somebody's good. Verse 6. Ah, the harvest. Seven harvests. For, so it takes us only to verse 13. Seven harvests. Set thou a wicked man over him and let Satan stand at his right hand. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Verse 7. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned. Amen. And let his prayer, uh, the pleadings and the prayers, it will turn into sin. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You won't say Amen. You are afraid, eh? <laughs> you are afraid of your Bible. This is also part. John 3, 16 is also part. This is Psalms. <laughs> The third harvest, let his days be few and let another take his office. Amen. And everyone said, amen. say amen. amen. Hmm. Let his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. 
<laughs> the amens are not coming. <laughs> Verse 10. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. And let them seek their bread out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he had. And let the stranger spoil his labor. Do not say amen. Verse 13. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him. Oh, what a prayer. Eh? Oh, yes. So, may you remember good seeds and good harvest, evil seeds and evil harvest. Mark 4.26. I want you to remember this. This is our opening scripture. Mark 4.26. And he said, so is the kingdom of God. So is what? This is our kingdom. Yes. So is the kingdom of God. One day I visited Archbishop Duncan Williams. It was his birthday. He had a party. And I went to celebrate with him. And when I was leaving, he came all the way to my car. My car was on the road. He came and walked with me all the way to my car. And when we were going to the car, then he lifted his hand like this. He said, may you also be celebrated. As you've come to celebrate me, may you be celebrated, may you be honored. What a blessing. You see, it was a seed that I have come to celebrate him and honor him. So may you sow good seeds and may you reap good seeds. May you never sow evil seeds in Jesus' name. Stand to your feet. This is a holiday message. Lift your hands. Father, thank you for your blessing today. We are grateful in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want us, how many of us feel that we have sown certain seeds that we are in danger? So just let everyone lift your hand and pray about every seed that you may have sown in your life, whatever. My God, my God, rewarding evil for good, hatred for love. I mean, rewarding enmity for love. Surrounding people with words of hatred and wickedness. Let's pray in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks and we give you praise. Father, we confess our sins before you. We are guilty of all these things that we have said. Because Lord, our tongues, our lives are not perfect, Lord. We have sinned in many ways. And we ask you to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness and cleanse us of all wickedness, deception, evil that is in our lives. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Let us be forgiven for all these. May the seeds we have sown not germinate. We command that all those seeds be boiled that they may be lifeless as stones and there shall be no return for every mistake we have made with our lives and our mouths. Thank you for your mercy that you give to us today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. And as every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you are here today and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, maybe somebody invited you to church today, but I want to pray with you as we close this service. Pastor, please pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. If you are here like that, lift your right hand like this. Lift it up high. Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you've lifted your hand, you want to be born again, you want to give your heart to God, and you've lifted your hand, come to me quickly in the front here. Come all the way. Come from the back. Come from the side. Come on.
lift your hands and say this prayer. Say, Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Please wash away my sins. Make me a new person. I can't hear you. Say, Jesus, make me a new person. Change my life. I open my heart and I give my life and my heart to Jesus Christ. Please write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. All of you here, I want to give you a special gift. Go with our brother who is lifting up the signboard over there. Just go with him right now. Follow me. Just follow him and you'll come back and join us. God bless you. You may be seated.